into the world, and you're going to find it funny that uh, I've been I've called the the title of the preaching this morning. It is well with my soul because when Jules revived that, actually, what happened is that the day before I woke up singing the song. Worthy is the man, you are worthy, a song about Christ. And then that morning you brought this song to me, and I, I was thinking, reflecting, Lord, what do you want me to preach on Sunday? What do you want me to bring? What, what exactly, what is the message? Why are you trying to call, to talk to me about you? Uh, th that song that speaks about the Lord who was crucified for us. Who he was crucified for us, for what reason? You know, and then slowly, slowly, that song that Jesus was singing, that was, I prayed and I prayed, Lord Jesus answered me. I prayed, I prayed, oh, I prayed and I prayed, Lord Jesus answered me. It is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. I prayed and I prayed, Lord Jesus answered me. I prayed, I prayed, oh, I prayed and I prayed, Lord Jesus answered me, it is well with my soul. Amen. So basically, when he was singing this song in the morning, in, uh, on Friday morning in the car, that's what came to me. I said, Lord, I don't know what prayer that prayer that you answered me because you're telling me it is well with my soul. So I just want to have that faith and believe in it. Amen? Amen. I just go and believe. Because I'm doing lots of prayers. I'm doing prayers for other people. I am praying for many things. I'm praying for myself. And I know that there is a prayer you have answered. And whatever prayer that is, you are telling me it is well with my soul. And this is the message I'm bringing to the church this morning. My friend, it is well with your soul. Confess it as strongly as you want. This expression is not going to be found in the word of God. You won't see it written, it is well with my soul. But what I'm trying to tell you this morning is to make it a confession. When you say it is well with my soul, it means you know that you know that you know that you know that whatever happens, it is well with your soul because you are in Christ. Amen? And that's the message I'm bringing to you this morning. And let's go to enter that message. We're going to see that we have so many things that God is giving us. But we don't know. The thing is that we would like to have a key. Personally, I would like to have a key. Person told me that you know 
Is it possible because it was Saturday? Is it possible for you to go back to London and bring back some of your books? I looked at this and said, "Wow, no. I limited your your power, your power by not bringing enough of my books at the time." But I remember the only thing that I did was that I prayed that morning. It was 2 a.m. I was in my bedroom because it was a fasting where I was working up at 3 a.m. to pray. So I prayed, and then I was in my hotel room, and then I prayed, and I said, "Lord, tomorrow I want to be the bestseller." And It means 
lots. It means be still, relax, my friend. Whatever is happening to you is in control in my hands. That is the reason why, my friends, I've gone through things. Is when I tell people, sometimes they think, "Whoa, really? You can't imagine." And this is what God wants us to do. That's the reason why you see. When you are, you, someone is still stuck, I will give you an example. On Tuesday, we were supposed to go, all of us, I mean all, the, 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 those who were supposed to go to Stock and Trent. The transport was 126 pounds, go and come. Be still, God is in control. I paid 8 pounds. One day travel in London is 8 pounds. Why, my friends? Be still. Don't panic. You see, I remember when I sent Kweku the last message he sent me on that, on that the day before. Yeah, I can pay for your transport. I said, whoa, I am not asking you to pay for my transport. That's what I answered him. Because I believe in my God. I know what my God, the one I am serving, the one I am calling, can do. And then when I went, eight pounds. All the others paid how much? 400. Be still, my friends. Sometimes things go apart. Sometimes we, we feel like, wow. We even see loved ones dying. Be still. Because God is in control. Those problems will still be there. Problems will be there until we die. Until Jesus comes back, problems will be there. So my friend, we need to work in this walk in this world and work to become like God wants us to be. People who live relax. Amen? We need to learn to live relax because hardships will always be part of our lives. We'll always see someone sick. We'll always see someone in need. We'll always see situations that we don't want to see. We always have to go through things that we think, wow, what is happening? But God is telling us, be still and know. He said, and know. It means keep in mind. Remember. Never forget that I am God. Amen? The first point that I want to tell you this morning is that we have the assurance of God's divine presence in our lives. I like the testimony of this woman on, 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 who was telling me about her. her. She said, you know, I, I am an evangelist. I am a, 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 a Sunday class teacher. She was teaching Bible studies to children. She said, but I myself departed to go back into the world. Now I am sick. And you know what? When she was saying this, I said to her something. I said, there is no condemnation for whoever knows Christ. So you are not condemned anymore. It means that she has to forgive herself first for doing what she did. Because God has already forgiven her. The time she decided to come back to the Lord, He has forgiven her. Because she doesn't want me to think that. It's because she left the Lord that the Lord made her sick. No. Yet, our sin brings us bad things to us. Because when you sin, you depart from God's presence. You, you yourself are moving away from God's presence. And when you are away from God's presence, that is the, that's where you put yourself in danger. You see, if, if you live in Africa or you see some documentaries, you're going to see, like, uh, when you have a, how do you call it, hen, a hen, with, how do you call those baby hens? With chicks, yeah? With those little chicken. What happens is that, you see the hen going, you see all the chicken behind. Have you seen that in documentaries or somewhere? They're always close to the mom. Always. Now, it is when one is far than what you're going to see a dog trying to catch them. You see a girl or a cat or something or someone trying to catch them. Have you seen that? I've seen that already, always. And we are the same. We need to learn to stick with God. Because it is in His presence. In His presence we get everything we want. We are protected just by His presence around us. Listen. I'm not saying.
saying that bad things are not going to be there anymore. But I am saying we are protected. We are in the cover, on the cover, when we remain close to Him. Yet the temptation is there, and the devil will always try and catch us because he knows that we are weak. Amen? Amen. Now, God says, when we read verse 1, God is our refuge and strength. And God is our refuge and strength. I'm still on verse 1. What is the strength? The strength is what gives you security. The strength is what gives you boldness. The strength is what has the might. You want the might, the courage to do what you need to do? Stick to God, my friends. It's only in His presence that you can have that. It's only in His presence that you have that security. Amen? And now, and I like what the Bible says again. God is our refuge our, and our strength. And ever present. Present means that He's always there. He's always with you. He's always with me, my friends. He's always with us. He is present. He is present. And the verb here is is. It didn't say he will be. It didn't say it was, he was. It is said he is present in time of hell. He's present there for you. Always to help you, to assist you, to take you where you want to go. To take you where he wants you to go. Amen? Amen. And he doesn't leave us in our struggles alone. That's why he's there with us. Now, as I said, trouble will always be there, my friends. And troubles come in different kind of, kind of shapes. It can come in the term of uh, 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 like a sickness, distress, financial problem, suffering, anything. You can name it. I think we don't need to, 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 to give you examples of, of troubles. I think we have enough signs of troubles around us. Yet, there's one thing I want you to remember, which the Bible says here. God is in our, is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Can you take that little word in and underline it in your Bible, my friends? The Bible says it is in your trouble that he is there. He is your strength in your trouble. The Bible doesn't say that it is before or after, it is during your trouble, it is in the midst of your trouble that he is with you. Hallelujah. It's not before your trouble, it's not after your trouble, it is when you are in trouble, in the midst of your trouble, when you have already jumped in the mud, then the Lord is there. And what is he there? To offer you refuge and to give you strength. What great assurance. God is our refuge in all the troubles we are going through. You see? This is something you understand here. You think, oh yeah, this is mud. I'm going to go and dig in that mud instead of digging in that, in that swimming pool. You know, every, people do any kind of things. My friends, when you are in that mud, inside that mud already, God is with you. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! That is what he says. Because he knows that in that mud, you might take a, 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 a disease. He's already there to give you security and healing. And you know why? That's why we have to start thinking. Why is it that sometimes we put ourselves in trouble and then we remain in those troubles? Sometimes we put ourselves in trouble and then no solution comes. It's not because God left us. He was there. He is there. That's what he says. You can stand there, jump into trouble. In that trouble, my friend, God is there, offering you refuge, telling you, my friend, wake up, wake up, I'm here. Stand up, get up, get out of that mud. That's what he's trying to do. And you know how you do it? He can send someone to talk to you. He can talk to you through your word. He can give you a dream. He can give you a sign. But we ignore it. That's the reason why. The consequences of our mud, the mud we jump in will start having an effect on us. 
Hallelujah. But he is still there. And even when the consequences are there, he is still there because those consequences are problems and trouble. And yet he is in there with us. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God is our refuge, our strength, and the help that is always present. He's nearer to you and me, my friends. Nearer than anyone in your family. Nearer than your pastor. Nearer than your best friend. Nearer than your boss. Nearer than anyone who is always there with you every day, every single time. Because he's the only one who will never abandon you. Hallelujah. We see men who are said to their wives, I love you more than you. I don't know. But one day, one day, they leave. True or false? We see that. We see friends who say, you are my best friend. And one day, one day, they are separated. You see? For any reason. It can be distance. It can be quarreling. It can be anything. Look at me and Anna, my best friend, Anna. I haven't seen her for a long time. Before. Before we had children, I don't know. At that time, we didn't even have internet. We would write to each other at least two, three times a month. We traveled. I went to America. We went to Africa together. We went to France. We traveled. We did lots of things. Now, at some point of time, she got married. She got children. And I have mine. And time has made us now. Even I can, I can remember until maybe 2005, there was no Christmas where we wouldn't, we wouldn't send each other gifts. The last time I sent her a gift was maybe last year. And she told me she had a gift for you guys. She never sent it. You, are you getting it? I'm not blaming her. What I'm trying to say is that time and life can separate people. But even that time, my friend, God is always there with you. Hallelujah. Yet I still say today that she's my best friend. She is. I can sometimes see her on Facebook. She doesn't say hello. I don't say hello. You see, because we are busy doing our own stuff. Yet we are still friends. Amen? Amen. But we are no longer as friends as we used to be, as close, sorry, as we used to be. But with God, He will be that close to you. Even when you depart from Him, He's still there, waiting for you. Hallelujah. Now, can we read Psalm 139, verse 7 to 12? Because it's important for us to understand that. That's why when we pray, I always say, Lord, where can I go without you? Where can I hide? There's no place you can go without the Lord. Can someone read, stand up and read in the name of Jesus, please. I read in the name of Jesus. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in death, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Amen. Your right hand will hold me fast. Hallelujah. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me, and the light become and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is a light to you. Amen. Where can you go? Everywhere you go, God is there. You go left, he's there. You go right, he's there. You go backward, he's there. You go in the mud, he is there. Hallelujah! Amen. What a good hope! This should revive your soul. That's why I'm saying this morning, my friend, it is well with my soul. Hallelujah! Amen. Amen. You see, the other pastor that told me that, you know, since I've been working with you, you are always positive. That's why I like with you. I said to him, Pastor, I know the God I'm serving. Why should something burden me? Why should something make me despair? When I know that wherever I go, in whatever situation I am in, He is there. I go left, He is there. Where can I flee from your presence? Nowhere. He is omnipresent. Hallelujah. Woo! Amen. Omnipresent. Which means that I am talking here. He is here. Wow, Lord. You are here, Lord. I'm walking on the street. He is there. I'm going for some interview. He is there. That's the reason 
why, Lord, I love you. And that's the reason why, my friend, we should know something. Because he is there with you, to guide you, to make a, for, to be a refuge for you, and to show you what to do, just like the Bible just said here. When things don't go the way you want, just praise him. He said, Lord, you are with me, and it didn't happen the way I wanted, so it means you have another plan for me. Hallelujah. That's the reason why I never stop smiling. That's the reason why I'm always happy. And I told that to Pastor the other day. He was telling me something. I said, you know, if it doesn't happen, it means that God didn't want it. He said, wow, you have faith. I said, no, I believe in Christ. And I believe what the Word says. And I've learned something. It doesn't mean that I don't have feelings. I have feelings. Just like the other day, when I went to see that lady, imagine I started crying with them. They started crying. And I had tears in my eyes, to be honest. But I didn't want to sob with them the, the way they were. They were already sobbing, my friends. Oh, oh, you know that? You cannot resist that kind of cry. You know when, you know they cry if someone cries silently, you don't see them, it's different than someone crying loud. Are you getting it? And then, if it one, it's all right. And then I looked at B, and then she went and did tissue and also said, <laughs> I was like, oh my God. If I let myself go here too, that's not why you brought me here. Amen? So instead of starting something with them, I asked, Lord, why did you bring me here? It was to pray. So I started praying. Are you getting the, it? Is it that I didn't have feelings and I was, my heart is so cold that I didn't cry with them? No. I had my tissue that she gave me in the hand and I put it down. I took my Bible and I started reading the Bible instead of crying. That's what God wants us to do. Know that He's there with us. And look, that strength that He gave me at that very moment helped to revive the faith of the others. Hallelujah. That's how it is. Because imagine we, are, we would all have been crying. We would have been, oh yes, you know, oh Rosanna, I know what you're going through. Oh yes. Maybe we would have been even uh, prayed. Maybe I would have left there crying. Depressed. Instead, I'm telling you, my friends, that by the time I left, I, you saw me when I came back home. I was all right. I was happy because we saw happiness. We left, revived. This lady who has had pain, who asked now, she was saying jokes. We were laughing, so we left with another spirit. That's how God works. Hallelujah. That's how our Lord works. You see? Jesus said, Matthew 28, 20, I am with you always. He didn't say, I will be. Once again, when you read the Bible, be very careful about, about the word. He said, I am, I am with you always, even until the end of the age. So my friend, he is there. You want to get rid of him? He is there. It's not because you want it or you don't want it. He is there. So learn to live with him. Learn to walk with him. Learn to approach him. Amen? Amen. Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My father will love them. And we will come to them and make our home with them. That's what Jesus says in John 14 verse 23. My friend, what does it mean? When Jesus makes a home in your house, your house is you. Because you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. You are the house of God. So when Jesus makes a temple and comes in your home, you go somewhere. It is Jesus they see in you, my friends. And, and know that if someone sees Jesus in you, and if that person doesn't have Jesus, it does, they won't welcome you as they should welcome you. Amen? It is, it, because that's what happened in the Bible. That's the reason why you see it's very hard for us to be Christians. It's very hard. It's not an easy task. And even Jesus said it, that we will be persecuted for our faith. Thank God we are even in an era where they don't kill Christians anymore. Many were killed for their faith. Thank God here you can walk freely, saying I'm, I'm Christian, or even walk with a cross. There are still areas. Recently I was talking with someone about what, is hap what has happened in, uh, in, uh, in the part of Nigeria some, some, some times back. 
where they were killing Muslims, were killing people just for Christianity. We saw that recently in South Africa. We saw that in Mali or I don't know what other country or Kenya or somewhere there, where Muslims were killing people for being Christians. You see, we have to be very careful. As we know the Lord, we know that He is with us. So don't, don't let anything depart us from Him. And this uh, passage that we are reading today, Psalm 46, also gives us the divine promise. We're going to read verses 2 to 5 to see the promises of God. This divine promise is so important. Can someone read it in the name of Jesus? Because it's so important because it tells us that God helps us. He helps us every time. Every time. Sometimes we don't see it. Because you see, I might think that you have me because let's say I wanted to, I wanted to go here on my right. And I couldn't go there. And then Bertrand came, pushed me a little bit or helped me. And then I went. Because I saw it physically, I thought, yeah, wow, he helped me. My friend, sometimes God helps us by not doing anything. I have already given the testimony about what happened to me in 2001, when I went to America. God gave me all the signs not to travel, and then I suffered from not listening to those signs. You see, God was trying to help me, telling me, my friend, if you go there, wow, suffering is there for you. But I didn't listen to any of those signs, and I traveled. I've told you about that. You see? Then there was these bombings in America, and I had to stay there about 20 days instead of 10, and I had my PhD to give back, and it was suffering. By the time I submitted my PhD, my friend, I was sleeping two hours every 48 days because I had so much work to do, and I had a baby. Bertrand was still a baby, he was only one year old, and it was so hard. My mom had to stay in my house to help me day and night. And I, I was drinking coffee so much that since that time I stopped drinking coffee. I hate even the smell of coffee today. Just because of all that. Because I went through such a time that, wow, I always remember. You see, what was the sign? It was not done travel. But yet, because I had money, I did everything and I did travel. He let me go. He said, but he showed me, don't do it. But I wanted to do it so badly. He let me do it. And in the end, can I go and blame him? No! Because when I remember, I was like, whoa, that sign that this, the embassy lost my passport was a sign for me not to travel. After that, that sign that went with my ticket, my plane ticket, it was a sign for me not to travel. Then this happened. Then my, my clothes were, were, oh, Lord. You see? He gives, he gives us sign. He's, Gives us that divine promise. Psalm 46, 2 to 5. Therefore, verse then 10 to 5, yes. You will not fail, though the earth will give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters grow and firm and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose dreams may belong to the city of God, the holy water where the most high dwells. God is within her, she will not fall. God will not fall break of day. Hallelujah. At the break of day, God will help you. God will help you. And this is confirmed by Psalm 30, verse 5. That says that. May stay all night. My friend, you may be going a long night. That started maybe since your birth. You may be going a long night. You may be going through a long night that you seems, it seems not to stop. You may be going through a long night of poverty. You may be going through a long night of sickness. You may be going through a long night of whatever you call it. But let me tell you one thing. Psalm 30 verse 5 says, Rejoicing comes in the morning. So it is time you start calling your morning in prayers. Hallelujah. Amen. Start asking God for the morning in your life. You may be going through a long night. Start asking for the morning to come. Hallelujah. Because God says, 
in verse five, Psalm 46, verse 5. God will help her at break of day. When the break of day starts in your life, when morning comes in your life, all the suffering is gone. Start asking God in your prayer that the long night has lasted. Now, Lord, show me the morning. Show me the break of day. Because that's what you said. Because you are with me. Because you are said, you said you will never leave me. I want to see the morning now. I want to see the break of day now. Everything you are going through, that, that, that doesn't match with what the word of God says. In your life and for your life, it's not from God. And for it to stop, you need to see the morning in your life. Amen? Amen. You need to see the morning. My friend, wake up for your morning. In your prayer, ask God for your morning. In your prayer, ask Him for the break of day. So that things can change. Hallelujah. Sometimes you see, we take it and we think, oh yeah, it's normal. Just like the other day I was talking to my mother and then I, I, was, I, I told her something and she said, you know what? This has been in our family for all the, all the time. You know what she told me? She said, and it's, and it's true, if I look at the trends, this has also happened to me. But I told her, no mom, it's not happening to me anymore because I am Christ. It's just, she said to me, that her dad was this kind of person that every time he would help people, the same people would either insult him or do bad things to him. And my mom had known her like that. Every time she helps someone, in the end, he turns against her. She's been like that. And she told me this exactly on Wednesday, on Tuesday or Wednesday. The 27th was, no, on Wednesday, when I talked to her on the phone on Wednesday. And I told her, no, mom, I know Christ. I know this is finished. Iniquity in my life is finished because Christ has paid the price. But if I, I am to look, it happened to me too. Most of, most of times. Lots. You're trying to do good, it turns back onto you. You're trying to help, it turns back. It bounces back. You see? But I know one thing. Dawn has come into my life. Morning has come into my life. Oh, I am rejoicing. That is the reason why I told my mom, no, that has stopped in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Because some people are used to, oh yeah, it's always happening to me, so you take it for granted. Yeah, it's normal. It's normal. No, my friend, it's not normal. Look for dawn. Look for the morning to come into your life. The break of the day needs to come into your life so that the cycle will be broken. Don't take anything bad as normal in your life. <coughs> Sorry, in your life. Because the Bible says God has plans of peace and plans of happiness. Not plans of evil. That's what he says in Jeremiah. So anything that you that looks like the plans of evil, don't accept it. Reject it with your strength. Reject it in prayer. Say no to it until don't. Come. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible says we have to resist the devil until he flees. If he resists, he doesn't want to flee, send him the fire of the Holy Ghost. But do not accept it until you see something changing. Amen? Amen. You see, that's the reason why a lot of people, they're in trouble, they try to fight alone. Because they have taken it for granted. It's normal. I accept it. I remember when I used to be a student for a long time, and even I finished my studies as a student, and then I used to babysit and, you know, doing those kind of jobs. And one day I stopped, I was like, wow, if I continue in this, I will finish in this. Because you get so used to what you're doing that you don't want to move on. Some people are so much afraid to. To, to, to make a step, to take a step forward because that step it looks risky for them. You need to be very careful, my friend. When you believe in God, the Bible says, therefore, we will not fear. Don't be afraid. Take the step. Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake, 
with your surgeon. What is, what is it? No, no, no. My friends, the Bible says, do not be afraid. Full stop. And more than that, we are told in Romans 3 that God, God is the only one who has the truth. Let God be true and every man being alive. That's what the Bible says, tells us. Why, my friend, that's the reason why I don't believe whatever a man can say about what I am doing. Amen? Amen. Otherwise, I wouldn't be standing here. If I had believed what Quaker said to me, I wouldn't be standing here. My friend, when your own son tells you what, that the God you are praying is not real, whoa, it hurt because I'm a human being. Yet, the Bible tells me in Romans 3 not to believe what a man says, but to believe in what God says. Hallelujah! Amen. That's the reason why I always, I'm always there. He says whatever he wants. He does whatever he wants. But I believe what God has given me. What God has said about me. Hallelujah! I don't believe in what he says. And whatever decision he makes doesn't stop me from worshiping my Lord with the whole heart. No. No. And I will tell you what. And when you look, the person who doesn't recognize the God in you is the one who's going to be troubled. When God does what he has started, when God finishes what he has started with you. Hallelujah. When God finishes, and I will give you a good example about it. When I wanted to do my PhD, my brother Cyrus, I want you to listen to this testimony. I wanted to do my, my PhD. And when you do PhD in France, you have to prepare a folder and go and give it to a professor. And then the professor reads it and he can say, Yes, I want you to to I want you to do the PhD with me because your folder is good and what you're presenting is good. I finish and first I need to say something. To be able to do a PhD. The PhD is the highest diploma you can have in university. To be able to do it, you need to have uh, two honors. Either very good or good. If you have less than that, you cannot do it. I had good, so I, was, I had access to do it. Which means that if a university judged that I had good, it was good. So now, I wanted to go and see a lady. Get her my folder. She read it. Instead of her calling me saying, okay, I'm not interested in what you are doing. I'm not taking you to do your PhD with me. The lady insulted me. It was the highest insult, not even to me only, even to the institution that gave me good and gave me access to do a PhD. You know what she said? She said to me, and I still have that letter, she wrote a letter to me, and I kept it that I was going to show it to my children and my grandchildren to tell you that don't let a man ever stop you. She sent me a letter saying that I have read your PhD, I left it at, the, at my window, come and pick it before it rains because I am going on holiday. What an insult! You know what it means? Of course I never went to pick it. Because I gave it to her while in the university. So if she didn't want to take me as a PhD student, she needed to leave it at the university secretary. So I would go and pick it. That's the procedure. Now, she was insulting me saying that it's such a bullshit that I am putting it at the window, at my, at my window. Can you imagine? It's not even come and knock and I'll give it to you. You know, you put it like, I'm throwing it out there. So come and take it before it rains. I still have that letter today. You know what I did? I left there. I was so shocked. I read that letter and I kept it. I said, I would never throw this letter and look for another university professor. And that day I met one and he said, Yes, I'm going to take you for your PhD. And I was so happy. I remember I had my umbrella. I left my bag and umbrella and left. And I went to the train. When I was in the train, I remember, oh, my umbrella and everything. And I came back. He said, Yeah, you left it. I said, Yes, I'm so happy. That's why I left it. You see, someone else judged my work worthy. Now, after four years, I finished my PhD. You know what I did? I sent a letter to the lady in 
inviting her to come and see me submitting it. Of course, I knew she wouldn't come. Amen? Amen. Believe in what God says you are. Don't believe in man. Had I stopped in what the lady had done, I would have been crying to myself, wow, how can she do that? So my work is so rubbish. That's what she wants to tell me. That's what she said. It's so rubbish that I'm putting it at my window. Come and take it before it rains. That's the word I will never forget. You see? I said, no. Four years later, I sent her a message. Come, I've finished. I will be submitting on the 7th or 8th of December 2001. Come. She didn't come. And she sent me a letter, oh, congratulations or something, and that, 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 something like that. Shame. Who was in shame now? The time of God. Hallelujah. Amen. So that's why it's important to always remember that we have a divine promise with God. That promise is that He'll always be there with us. Whatever happens, a man can see something in you. But out of anything, out of any reasons, they can say the contrary of what they're saying. If that lady saw, because a PhD in France is something serious. In the UK or in America is 200. My PhD is the total of 800 pages, my friends. Because there are two volumes. It's lots of work. It's not something you do like that. And the, the, the preparation of it, you, which you start one year before. My friend, it's also lots of pages that you are prepared. And then someone tells you, I'm putting it at the window, come and take it before it rains. You know, where's the respect for your work? Nothing. There was nothing there. I was shocked. I felt humiliated, to be honest. I felt everything. Like, wow, she doesn't even respect that another university deemed my work worthy to continue on to PhD. You see? You have to be careful. The divine promise is there. God is always there with us. And that should give us an unshakable confidence. An unshakable confidence to continue in faith and to go on in what we believe we are doing. Believe in what you're doing. Believe in what you're doing. Believe. If I did not believe, I wouldn't have been doing my PhD. Because I would have stopped. And I heard people telling me, now, nah, oh, you have a baby. Oh, you won't be able to finish your PhD. I have people who always have things to say about what you're doing, my friends. To stop you. You're going to say that those who discourage you are more than those who encourage you. Those who discourage you, just like, they, 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 they're coming. And all those, when I invited them, when I submitted, they didn't come. Jealousy. Why? Because they didn't believe you could get there. My friend. Even one of my aunt, she went and said, whoa, that lady who says she has a PhD has never had a PhD. But God is so good that day. Woo! My God is good. There's a lady who has attended my submission, my PhD submission. I don't know her. If I meet her, I can't even recognize her. And that day, when my aunt was talking, that day the, the lady was there, she said, whoa, 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 please, are you talking about someone called Regine? Oh, if I meet that girl, I can't recognize her. But the first time that I went into La Sorbonne University, it was to see her submission. You know how God does that, his judgment? That was his judgment. And then now, the one who was talking, she didn't say anything. People who always try to stop you, my friends. They said, no, you can't do this because you have a child, you have a little baby at home. Well, my friends, if you can't encourage someone, just keep quiet. Because the Bible tells me to keep still. Lord God says, keep still. Everything is in control. That's all I know. Amen? Amen. We have, and this is going to be the last point today, the divine peace in Jesus. You see, I'll give you some, an example. Jesus knew that we are so fearful and we have this tendency of becoming restless when a situation comes. He knew it and he talked to his, his disciples. John, can you read? John 1 verse 14. He told his disciples something. He said, let your heart let your heart, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. He said it because he knows that we tend to live, to, to let things
things take over our mind to trouble us. And before he left, he gave us his peace. That peace that is above everything. John 24, verse 27. Peace I live with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives, my friend. The one will try to think, to make you think that you have peace by giving you a law. But what they don't tell you is that when you don't pay that law, they will start selling you uh, barristers or whatever. They will try to make you think you have peace by getting things in the world, but you, they don't tell you the conditions. The peace of God comes with no conditions, my friends. He said, do not let your heart be troubled and do not be afraid. That's what Jesus said to his disciples. John 20, 14, 27. Do not let anything trouble you and don't be afraid. Believe in him, believe in him, believe in him and believe in God. Amen? You see? Let's read verse 2 and verse 10. Verse 2 of uh, uh, Psalm uh, uh, 46 that we've been reading today. Verse two, Psalm 46, verse 2. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give away and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. So whatever is happening, whatever is shaking around you, don't, don't, don't be afraid. Verse 10. Be still and know that God is God. So today, my friend, this is going to be my last point. Stop struggling. You have no strength to struggle. Quit struggling, my friend. Quit struggling about what is stopping you from being who you want to be or what you want to do. Because it's only by knowing who God is that you get there. Amen? His throne. So don't be afraid. This means that God is all powerful. He knows everything. He's omnipresent. If you bring your stress to him, you bring your problems to him, you bring your fears to him, then he will be able to help you. The problem is that lots of people are trying to deal with that alone. I'm not saying bring it to your pastor. I say bring it to God. Hallelujah. Bring it to God. Trust God with all your problems. Trust the Father. Trust Jesus. Because Jesus said, John 14, verse 1, Believe in God. Believe also in me. Hallelujah. Because only Jesus can give you the peace that he promised. Rest in him. He's your refuge. Hallelujah. The Bible says, everyone who is burdened should come and rest their souls and have and find rest for their souls. That's Matthew 11, verse 28, 29. If you feel burdened by anything, go and find rest where you're going to find it. The rest of your soul, you're going to find it by the Lord alone. That is the reason why today I said that. Yes, Lord, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. Make it a confession every day, my friends. It is well with my soul. This problem is here, but it is well with my soul. Because I have peace in the Lord. Because I have solutions in the Lord. It is well with my soul. The one who gives comfort is God. He gives it. He gives comfort. He gives hope and peace in His Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us be blessed this morning to renew our trust in the Lord, telling Him it is well. Lord, I still don't see, I still don't have, but I know it is well. Amen. 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 Let us give a clap to the Lord for the word. Thank you. Thank you, Father. I want us to put our heads down and pray. Amen.
Father God, I want to thank you for this word this morning. This word talked to me so much as I was preparing it. Because I'm a human being, Lord, like all of us. There are times where we forget that you are God. You are God. This morning I ask you to forgive us for forgetting. Other times when I forgot about you, that you are the Almighty, the all-powerful, the omnipresent, omniscient God, I ask you to forgive me this morning. Renew my strength in you, Father. Renew my peace in you. Renew each and every member of Rema Resource Center's strength and peace this morning. And let our heart, our mouth, confess daily that it is well with us. It is well with our soul. Because you are with us. Because of your mighty presence. Be exalted, mighty warrior. Be exalted, King of Kings. We love you, Father. Do not abandon us as you promised. Show us your might. Be with us always as you promised. Manifest your presence in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.